Hello, this is Pastor Phil Vickers. I'm recording this short devotion on Tuesday morning uh, so that it can get out on our Wednesday e-blast. So if you're listening to this, you already know how today's events have transpired, whether or not we have a new president or whether our incumbent will be serving another term. As for me and my perspective here at 843 on Tuesday morning, what I'm praying for is that no matter the results, that everything goes peacefully. I wanted to read a section of scripture to you this morning from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 23, beginning in verse 39. And this is sometimes called the story of the repentant thief. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This uh, section of scripture is the tail end uh, of the story of Jesus' trial. Uh, and so Bible scholars have written that this story of the trial is the culmination uh, of what began in the very beginning of the gospel, which is the story of how Jesus' authority, the authority of the kingdom of God, interacts with the authorities on earth, the government on earth. Uh, the government, of course, in this time was a, a government of occupation that was subjugating God's people. They weren't free in their own country. They were paying taxes uh, to support uh, being subjugated, which is why tax collectors were so despised, because they were, uh, they were supporting a, an enemy by collecting these taxes. In the story of the, the trial, Jesus first goes before the Sanhedrin, or the, the religious ruling body of the Jewish people, and he's convicted there of blasphemy for saying he was the Son of God. The irony there being, of course, that he was, but they were not open to that message. And then the people tell Pilate uh, that Jesus told them that it was not right for them to pay taxes, which, of course, when it, you start talking about money, it's easy to see how Jesus got into trouble uh, that way. Remember, he had on his record that he had gone into the temple and overturned the money-changing tables, which, of course, there he's disrupting the flow of money, um, going to the Sadducees who ruled the temple and who benefited from the Roman occupation. So because of these things, he ends up crucified. He, he's crucified because he is labeled as, as an insurrectionist, one who was challenging Roman authority. Of course, we know from the whole gospel that Jesus had bigger fish to fry than that. He was coming to do something much larger uh, than throw off one occupation. He came to throw off the occupation of sin itself so that we could be, um, be free uh, and noble beings. But uh, he is misinterpreted as being a simple rabble rouser and therefore ends up on the cross. Interestingly, although we, th we call this story the repentant thief, thieves were not crucified. Uh, thievery, plain regular thievery, was not an offense punishable by crucifixion. Crucifixion was reserved for insurrectionists. But actually, uh, the word in Greek used for these criminals was lestai, and a lestai, or the lestai, were people who stole so as to disrupt the Roman occupation. So they were sort of these Robin Hood figures or conducting this kind of guerrilla warfare thievery to disrupt Roman supply chains, to do anything they could to, uh, to, to uh, disrupt the Roman occupation of Jerusalem. So that's why they end up there. So um, uh, it says something that Jesus was crucified with these lestai, in the eyes of the ones doing the crucifying, they were all guilty of the same thing. They were all guilty of challenging Roman authority. And that's why crucifixion was reserved for insurrectionists, not just because it was a painful way to die, but because it was a public way to die. You were lifted up high so that everyone could see and then say, that is the terrible price that one pays for challenging the government. All that is background to this one uh, lestai, this one rabble-rouser, this one insurrectionist, this one thief, who says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And I had read this verse hundreds of times before it occurred to me, um, the faith that it took for this individual to say that. Here you are crucified next to him, and this cross, uh, in everyone's eyes at this point, was the end of Jesus' ministry. And it was the sign that his ministry was a failure. That cross, him ending up there, was the sign that everything he said was wrong. Because if he was the Son of God, 
uh, if the kingdom of God truly was breaking into the world through what he was doing, uh, then this wouldn't have happened. And yet this man crucified there next to him has the faith to say, uh, remember me when you come into your kingdom, even though from that point, at that point in time and from that perspective, there was absolutely no evidence to say that Jesus' kingdom would ever come to fruition. He was day dying on a Roman cross. That was the end of it. Uh, and so for this, uh, this crucified Lestai in his dying moments um, to, uh, to reach out to Jesus with these words of faith is quite telling. And of course we hear uh, Jesus proclaim quite a profound blessing upon him um, in response to these words of faith. Uh, Today you will be with me in paradise. One of the things I get from this story is uh, that um, even in the bleakest of situations, uh, the kingdom of God is active. Here in this, 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 this picture, this bleak picture of these three crucified men all dying in public, all dying as a sign of how you should never challenge Rome, how you should never challenge the authorities. Do your work, pay your taxes, and do what you're told, or this is what uh, happens to you. Uh, and at this moment of profound bleakness, there is still faith. Uh, Jesus is still proclaiming blessing. And of course, we know that that was not the end of things. We know that although Jesus was crucified three days later, uh, the tomb was empty. Uh, and that, as a, as, a, as a sign from God, um, that death is not the end, that, uh, that Jesus' ministry was not at an end, that it's continued uh, through the church and still continues to operate, that the kingdom of God indeed was breaking into the world through what he was doing and continues to break into the world through the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of the church. Um, so I'm profoundly aware that, you know, in times of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of uncertainty, that no matter how bleak things look, that the kingdom of God is still active and we see that in this passage we read today even uh, when it seems like all is over that all is lost that there is no hope uh, there is in the name of Jesus and for that I give uh, profound thanks this morning and always uh, thank you for listening and God be with you